Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to construct Euler's circle, they also called the nine point circle, using a compass and straight edge. And what we're going to have to do to get this circle to be constructed correctly is drop three perpendiculars one, two, three through the vertices of a triangle perpendicular to their opposite sides because those altitudes. By dropping a perpendicular, we'll find altitudes, and the feet of the altitudes, which is where the altitude crosses the opposite segment, will be on this circle. Those will be critical points. We also want to construct one, two, three perpendicular bisectors because that will give us the one, two, three midpoints that the circle also crosses, and the circumcenter, which is the uh, other point we need to construct the center of the Euler circle. The center of the Euler circle is exactly halfway between the orthocenter, which is the intersection of all the altitudes we construct, and the circumcenter, which is the intersection of all the perpendicular bisectors that we construct. Lastly, the circle will also cross the midpoints of each vertex and orthocenter. So, like here's a vertex. Here's the orthocenter. Halfway between is another point that the circle will cross. And there are one, two, three of those points as well. So let's do those constructions. Again, this is all about dropping perpendiculars and perpendicular bisectors. So I hope you join me in this. It's quite fun to do. Here is a triangle that I'm going to use. You might want to pause the video and set up your own using a straight edge or maybe you take a screenshot of this and print it out so that you can follow along. All right, so the first thing I like to do is set up my perpendicular bisectors, and that'll give you my circumcenter, and that will also help me um, find the midpoints of each side. So I'm going to line the compass up, and I want to make it wider than halfway across towards A. I can make it wider than A if I want, but it has to at least cross the halfway point, otherwise we won't have any intersections to work with. So once I'm happy with the position I got, scroll down a little bit, I want to mark the arc where I think the perpendicular bisector will go, or extend to, and then I'll do it on both sides. And then I will go over to A and do the same thing. So here we go, we're going over to A, and then we're going to swing the compass up, up. Okay, phew, I made it. There's the one intersection, and then swing it down. We just made it here too. Okay, boom. If I connect those two intersections, I'll have my first perpendicular bisector. So let's do that real quick. Okay, got my line tool set up. Boom. And I'm just... I'm going to try to make it just as neat as possible. You can line up your ruler or straight edge to do that. And be careful, adjust it. There we go. And then we want to mark this midpoint because that's going to be a key point on the circle. Boom. Okay, that's our first construction constructed perpendicular bisector. And I can even change the color. I, I'm going to color code so that um, it's easy to keep track of what's going on. So everything that's this color, which is about like a teal, will be something with a perpendicular bisector. All right, let's go over to B and do the same thing. The width of the compass needs to be at least more than halfway uh, towards point A over here. And then I'm going to make my two arcs. One arc is there. And you can see it's, you know, it's getting close to the other arc as well. So I'm going to make sure it's a bigger size so I can distinguish it. I go over here and kind of repeat that in the other direction. Arc and then arc. And if you're at the point like, why does this work? Um, I, you know, I, I will explain that in other videos, but I'll say briefly here that the perpendicular bisectors we're making are formed by these equal distances from each vertex because that's what a perpendicular bisector is. It's all the points that are equidistant from two endpoints of a segment. So what we just did was we took our compass and lined it up so that we basically have a radius of a circle going from one endpoint and the other. 
and that's this intersection is the point that's equal distance from both B and A. So that's where the perpendicular bisector will be. All right, so let's get another line in there. Again, these marks, you want to keep them as light as possible. That looks pretty good, I think. Maybe there. And then I'm going to adjust the other side. Oh, that should be good. Change the color so it matches. And then just mark it with the midpoint. Okay, I'm happy with that. Boom. All right, now the circumcenter, this point uh, right here, is going to be really useful. So we want to pay attention to that. I want to mark that as well. We just want one more perpendicular bisector because you want to find that exact midpoint. But you, um, I think, I still think the easiest way to do this is a compass. All right, you'll see when we go to altitudes because they also cross the vertices of the triangle that you will no longer need the compass for a third um, altitude. But for the perpendicular bisector, I would do it again. All right, so let's widen it up again, just past the halfway point. So right if it doesn't reach all the way. And I want to make sure I have the right thickness and color. Okay, I'm happy with the color. So I'm going to swing it down. I'm going to estimate like about here. And then over here, same thing. Boom. Now I move the width. I've got to undo that. Be really careful with that. Don't want to change the width of the compass. And your compass might move a little bit or loosen. So make sure you're always checking the width of it. Okay. So now if we take our line tool and connect those two intersections, we have our midpoint. And I'll fix this line. It's a little bit too thick for what we need. Kind of adjust the angle of it. Okay, that looks good. Thin it up and color code. Okay, so that gave us our third midpoint. And that's three of our nine points done already. Now I'm going to start bringing in the altitudes. So the first altitude I'm going to get is from B to A. I'm just going to swing the compass like this. So we're, we're dropping a perpendicular now. So we're going to make a perpendicular bisector going to the bottom segment here. And uh, but it's going to be the perpendicular bisector of a small part of that segment. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to make sure the width of this looks good. Now, when you set your compass, in my case, I've got to constantly readjust the thickness, but you've got to make sure to, to draw the arcs and make sure they're hitting the point you want them to hit. So that looks pretty good to me. It's hitting this point over here. And it looks like actually it's going to hit again really close to it. So and that's because this is almost a right angle. So it sits at like this point right here and here. And um, the distance between B and A and B and this point is the same. So B will be on the perpendicular bisector of this small segment. So this small segment over here, I'm going to line the compass up with the intersection in this spot right here. Now the width of the compass, it could go beyond A if that's convenient. You just need to take a straight edge and extend the line. So that, that to me seems like a little bit more work, so I'm going to bring it in. And I noticed that I did not change my color for altitude, so let me fix that. I think that's the right one. Let's go to red. Yeah, okay. So we'll do all of our work for altitudes in red. Let's go to update the thickness. Okay. So from this point here, I've got more than halfway towards A. And again, I just do that so that the arcs I draw actually meet each other. And then I'm going to mark that and mark over here. And then repeat from the other side. So from A, right about there looks good. Mark it. And then mark it again. This will get us our first altitude, and we'll do one more. I'm not going to draw that line just yet. Um, and what I what I would suggest is that you can see now I'm going to line up the compass again, going from A to B. So just consider if it's more efficient for you 
to leave the compass at this width of this segment because you're using it again. Like I'm reusing that same length I measured before. Um, and if and if it's easier for you, you can mark these arcs before you do any other adjustments. Like if I if I was to draw uh, these arcs here, right? I could just flip the compass over and and do it again on this side before I even do the other marks I made. Okay, so I marked that arc and then all the way over here, mark this other arc. So that looks good. And then to draw the perpendicular, I really only need two more arches. Over here, I made too many. I don't need all of those arches. Let me clean those up. Because we have the point B that we're going through. So that has to intersect the arcs over here. We don't need the other points, the other arcs I made. Sorry, that was redundant. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just extra work. So now, okay, I've got my compass lined up at the intersection. And I'm definitely more than halfway. So I'm going to pull back a little bit here. And I'm just going to make two arcs. One here, but I want it to be red, so I'll fix that. And then I'll go from the other side and one from here that looks good except the color is misleading so let's make it red and thin it up a little bit and i i again i really suggest you use your own colors as well you don't you don't want to have all these beautiful constructions and just not know what you're looking at so color coding can really help all right so now i'm going to draw a line through a and this intersection here. This is my first altitude, and I'll adjust it. Looks like it's a little bit off. That looks better. I'm going to thin it up a little bit, make it red, and then repeat the process uh, over here. So through this intersection up to point B. Right. I don't need another another arc, set of arcs. That, that's more than enough. Okay, so I'm going to move that around. Looks good. Okay, make it red and thin it up. Okay, so those are our two altitudes. For the third one, as I was saying earlier, we don't need uh, our compass because we know it has to go through C and through this intersection right here. So we just take our straight edge and draw a line through C and through the intersection. That'll give us the altitude, the, uh, the third altitude through vertex C. So let me just adjust the color. And again, the thickness of that line. Oh, looks like it's not selected. Fix that. Boom. Red and thinner. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to adjust it so it goes kind of from the vertex. That looks better to me. And we're going to mark the ortho center right here. Boom. Okay. Last but not least, we've got out of our nine points, we have the one two three midpoints uh, and we just constructed our altitudes so we have the one two and three feet that our circle will cross now we see the midpoints between the um ortho center right here and each endpoint so between a and then between b and then between c so let's do that so we go over to the ortho center. I'm going to flip my compass around. In this case, the distance between the ortho center and point A is pretty small, so I want to be careful with my markings here. I'm going to go purple. And again, you want to be wider than halfway. So I'm going to go maybe here. That looks good. And I'm going to, yeah, I don't know if I like that actually, because it's so close to this dot right here. I'm going to widen it up a little bit. It should help me a tiny bit. Okay. There's one arc, and this is, I'm just doing a perpendicular bisector construction, two arcs, and then repeat from the other side. Okay, boom. One and two. Great. Take my line tool and connect the dots. Now you, when you're doing this, you don't need to draw the full line. You're At this point, you're definitely only interested in the midpoint. So I'm going to thin that up, and I'm going to leave it purple. But again, for you, you might decide um, to only draw the critical point you need, which I'll mark at the end right there. All right, two more to go. We're almost done. We're doing great. 
So here's the orthocenter. Okay, I'm going past the halfway point. And again, I'm doing that perpendicular bicenter construction, except what I really want is <laughs> a midpoint. That's my, uh, what I really want is the midpoint um, between C and the orthocenter. Mark that, I want it to be purple. I believe it should be purple at this point. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna thin it up better and then do it again down here. So this time I do need arcs above and below because um, I don't have a guiding vertex, right? Okay, so I'm gonna fix that color too and then I'm gonna try to, I thought I adjusted the color of the compass. Okay, boom. Didn't do it, oh no, sorry. Let me just try one more time. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to point C, got it. And make sure I have my purple pen selected. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna swing this down and see where it hits the other purple arc. Got it. And up here, did I make it? Yes, I made it, right there. Okay, so if I connect those two, uh, that will give me the midpoint of the orthocenter and C. So take my line tool and connect through the two intersections that are purple make sure I, I, I do any adjustments I have to make. Okay, that does not look like, oh, you know what, I was, getting, I was looking at the angle between the bottom segment of the triangle and this line, but it has to be perpendicular to this segment here. So that's actually good. All right, so I'm gonna thin this line up because it's way too overpowering. Boom. And I will, leave it as purple. Okay, purple. I have to go to my select tool, sorry. Get it, come on, Sean, get in there. Okay, so this is purple. Yes, okay. So that gives us our midpoint, which I'll mark. And then one more to go, that we want the midpoint between the orthocenter here and B up here. So I'm gonna line up my compass. It's more than halfway, it is. Let me test the color. It's stuck on that teal forever, apparently. So let's make it purple. Thin it up and test it. Perfect. Okay, so am I more than halfway? Yes, but I'm too close to that other arc. So I'm gonna pull it in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna like that better. There's one. And then over here, our second one. Got it, and then repeat from the other center here, the ortho center, one arc intersection, and then another. Okay, that looks good. And my line tool, from one intersection to another. Okay, so now that I have that line, I'm going to quickly adjust it. Let's make it purple and thin it up. And now I'll go to my marker tool, and I'm going to just mark my uh, midpoints between the ortho center and each vertex. One, two, and three. Okay, I think we're in a really good spot. Now all we need is the center of the circle, our last constructed point. Familiar construction now. We're doing lots of this, so the f there's my perfect, there's my circumcenter over here. So find your circumcenter, line the compass up to it, and go past the halfway point towards the orthocenter. Pick a color you want to use. I'm going to use blue. I'm going to thin it up a little bit though. Okay, that's pretty good. It's thinner, it's thicker than the other lines, which I'm actually happy with because I want this to stand out now. All right, I think this is a safe arc to draw. It's not gonna mess me up, it's not too small. Same thing here. Okay, then I wanna go over to the ortho center here and do the same exact thing. One and two. Okay, line tool from one intersection to another and this is gonna mark the midpoint. 
and the center for Euler circle, and then we get to actually graph it. Yay! We're getting somewhere. All right, so we're going to thin that up. Now with the marker, I'm going to mark the point we just found. Boom. Now comes the exciting part. We finish. We, we see if we got it. And it's a little bit exhilarating, actually, to me, because all that work, if, we, if it doesn't work, that happens. And we'll, we'll have to go back and figure out what's going on. But if I line this up with any of the nine points I just found, I should be able to draw the Euler circle. So for the grand finale, we'll put green on here, and I'll even thicken it up a little bit. Okay, so here we go. So the compass is lined up at the center, the mid of the circle, which is the halfway point between the orthocenter and circumcenter, and I've just drawn a, the length of this circle uh, using the radius of the compass set at that point and any of the nine points that I have. So here we go, we've crossed two already. Three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, that's that is not close enough. Let me go back, try to adjust that. Here, I'm gonna just go out a little bit further. Nope, I can fix this, I can fix this. Here we, here we go. I think the compass center really, I'm trying to look at this, made the dot a little bit big. Okay, let's look at that. All right, that's not perfect, but here we go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of the points. Now, mine's a little bit off, right? These points are not perfectly split. That will happen to you when you first do this. On paper, I actually find this much more doable than, um, than this program I'm using. I just thought it would be more visual uh, using these colors that the program comes with and without my hand in the way. But I hope this helped. This is Euler's Circle. And it is really worth constructing slowly so that when you get to this last step, it's like a dramatic and exciting finish. If you want to see this constructed on GeoGebra, I'm including the links below for you to check out. All right. Thank you.